Hello, everyone. Welcome this morning. My name is Molly, and I will be your moderator. I'd like to welcome you to the 2014 Homeschool Conference. And I'd like to introduce you to your presenter, Kathy Magnuson from Wildwood Learning. Today, she will be presenting five steps to unleashing the brilliance of your child. And welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Molly. So um, I want to just thank our sponsors and our supporters. And here's a list of them for the homeschooling conference this year. And on the map, I know we just, if you can go over to the little star on the side and then place where you are in the world. And I'm hoping I'm doing that great. There we go. It's kind of fun to see where everybody is from in the world. And um, I'm from northern Minnesota. And right now, today, it's 11 o'clock. And it's 80 degrees out and sunny. And after I'm done with this presentation, I'm going to go outside and enjoy the weather. So I just want to welcome everybody today to um, my presentation, Five Steps to Unleashing the Brilliance of Your Child. And just to tell you a little bit about myself, I have started a company called Wildwood Learning, and I'm a personalized learning guide. And I, the reason that I started this company is because there's, in my years of over 20 years of education, I have found that there's children out there that are just checked out of learning and not engaged. And so I want to help families seek alternative sources, resources, tools, and support in helping engage their child in their learning. I'm also a parent. I have four children, ages 11 to 15. I have one daughter and three sons. And I have a master's degree in education. I've been in parts of education for over 20 years. I, saw, I taught junior high and high school science for about 12 years. I've taught in the elementary K, well, preschool through sixth grade social and emotional learning skills. I'm the program manager of a girls leadership program that's up here in northern Minnesota. And it's called Girls Lead. And I'll speak a little bit more about that and through our presentation. And I've also worked with uh, the University of Minnesota in their extension service. I do a lot of volunteer work with my kids. And, um, and then also uh, with 4-H and Scout, and I've been a youth mentor, so I got a variety of, of in my background with education. But um, you know, today I'm going to talk a little bit about my sons here. This is my um, son Joseph and my son Andrew. Andrew's in the solid shirt, and it was because of him that I started Wildwood Learning. Uh, he's always been kind of the square peg trying to fit in a round hole at school. He's really inquisitive. He's a storyteller. He makes great chocolate chip cookies, but he just doesn't seem to fit into that cookie cutter mold of, of his school. And in second grade, we were noticing uh, problems in school, and he was tested for ADHD. And after some uh, work with medication, he was able to how uh, school come a little bit easier to him as far as uh, the challenges of getting things in on time and, and relationships with friends. But, you know, after a six-hour day of stress that was at school, and he'd come home and homework was just not the thing that he wanted to do. Uh, up until about sixth grade, school went really OK for him. But on the second day of uh, sixth grade, and he was just counting down the numbers of the school, number of days left in the school year. And uh, you know, one day after school, after we had been working on his homework for about an hour, he turned to me and he said, Mom, school feels like a jail to me. And the bars are just so close together that I can't get out. And that, that really pierced my heart. I was just 
sad to so sad to hear him say that after being in education for over 20 years and really loving learning myself I just saw his confidence go down and um, I started looking for ways for him to start feeling uh, confident and strong in himself and that drew me to using all my skills in in helping him so um, you know, I have a five-step process that I'm going to talk about today. And um, first of the five steps is just considering what your child's strengths are. And I'm just going to tell you that you're going to need a little, uh, you need some paper and a pencil or something to write with because i got a couple activities that we're going to be doing here. And if you want to join in, uh, that would be super. So um, the first thing I'd like you to do once you've gra grabbed your paper and pencil, is to uh, write your name five times and share in the chat box how that feels. And, you know, just take a minute and do that. And I'm looking in the chat box, and it's hard for me to sometimes do the talking and then also the chatting. So I'm going to rely on Molly if there's a question that comes up, you know, and at the end I'm answering questions. Please draw my attention to it if I missed it. So, yeah, so fun. I hear fun. You know, it might be easy to do it. Um, normal. Feels natural. Might even be kind of a little bit boring. So I'm going to now ask you, to write your name five times with your other hand. Oh, and Piggy says it got better with each each time you did it. So what are some things that happen when you want, write your name with your other hand, your non-dominant hand? Yeah, it's really difficult. What does it look like? when you do that. Time consuming. Yeah. Really hard. You know, you had to really think about it. And you had to, maybe it even looks kind of, yeah, sloppy. You can't read it. So, strengths are, are like writing with your, your dominant hand. There's something that you're born with. They're easy. They come natural to you. Um, you know, it looks like a hot mess. <laughs> yeah, you you can take those strengths and you can uh, use them in a variety of different activities. And your strengths are very precise and um, is are specific to who you are. So just a little bit background in strengths for those of you who aren't really um, familiar with it. Uh, there's a strength building act. Uh, equation and what strengths are is taking your natural talent the way you think you behave you feel along with practice and building your knowledge and developing those skills and you come up with your strengths which is just performing something at a near perfect performance so I'm going to give you a little example here with myself uh, one of my strengths in the strength finders, and we're going to talk a little bit about strength finders later, later, is connectedness. And connectedness is that faith that there's a link between all things and believing that there's really few coincidences. And so having that faith is my thought or my pattern of thought, you know, that everything will work out, this will happen for a reason. And so having that is is my um, my talent and I didn't realize that everybody didn't think this way and then I take time to be involved in my faith I invest my time in myself I am involved in uh, meditation and mindfulness and so in that practice I use that to and my connectedness in a way that I realize that other people don't look at the world the way that I look at the world. This really has been helpful to know because I've struggled with um, breast cancer in my past and having that skill of connectedness really helped me carry along myself in those difficult times through my life and then knowing that 
that's not the way everybody would have handled it or, or carried it out is, is a benefit. So I'm just going to talk a few minutes about Rudy. And I don't know if you're familiar with the movie, but um, Rudy it was this um, man who was 23 years old. He was 5 feet 6. He was 165 pounds. Uh, and his whole dream was to play on the Notre Dame uh, football team. His, fr his uh, family was a great fan of the Irish, and he wanted to play. And there was a whole movie made about him. And, you know, he was rejected three times from Notre Dame. He finally got onto the practice squad. And then for two years, he was on that practice squad. And, you know, the movie leads up through all his challenges and his struggles. and then at the final game of the senior year, you know, his teammates rally around him and he goes out and he gets put into the game and he tackles the quarterback and, you know, he's carried off the game, off of the um, field at that, for that game. Yay! So it's a great movie to watch and it really holds your, um, and it's really inspirational. But, you know, one of the problems with this is that it really, mask that that problem of that we need to always overcome our deficits. You know, it's inspirational, and but it brings us along that path of most resistance. And in, in the United States, you know, 77% of the parents think that a student's lowest grade deserves the most time and attention. And that's opposite than working on our strengths, because our opposite of working on our strengths is not a weakness, it's that depletion of energy, just like this poor kid here in in the picture. So um, in our culture, we really have that mindset of that we need to be working on our weaknesses when maybe we need to shift that to a, a thought of that not working on what's wrong with us or uh, having a child work on what's wrong with them, but working on what's strong in them to discover their talents and their patterns. And, you know, as you said, Peggy, here, that is the philosophy of many school districts. And working in the public school district, I see that a lot. You know, you can't be anything you want to be, but you can be a lot more of what you already are. And by working on your strengths and knowing them, really helps. So I'm just going to talk a minute about the program that I'm program manager of called Girls Lead. And in Girls Lead, we um, have a tagline of you are exactly you are a leader in exactly who you are. We work with teenage girls from northwestern Minnesota and northwestern Minnesota is very rural population, not very many um, opportunities and um, for the girls to go to and experience a bigger city. So in Girls Lead, we start with a five-day camp. Um, this year we were down on the University of Minnesota. The girls come together from different communities in northwestern Minnesota for this camp where we really help them build upon their strengths. The girls are ages 15 to 17 and are going into 10th through 12th grade. And then in this after they leave camp, they go back to their communities and they have a community sponsor that helps uh, them carry out a service project in their community. Also, uh, they get mentoring and life coaching. And then at the end of the six weeks, we join back together into a retreat that's more local in our area and share all the learning and what's going to go on in the future. So it really helps the girls to take their strengths and take that out into their community. And I'll be talking a little bit about that as um, that program as we go along. So the next step I want you to consider is determining your, your child's strengths. And, you know, it's really important to I think know your strengths, I believe, in knowing your strengths because it facilitates, you know, personal growth and, and learning. So again, I want you to grab your piece of paper and uh, something to write with and just 
write down three to five words uh, that describes maybe a child that you know or your own child, and um, you know, make those descriptions be specific. Some examples might be they're driven, passionate, storyteller. If you want to share some of those words up in the chat box, I really encourage you to do that. Maybe they're a thinker, compassionate, problem solver. So take a moment and do that. And we're going to be using this here, friendly. We're going to be using these here in just a few minutes. Outgoing, musically talented, great. So I'm going to give you some tools here because I really think that tools empower you to be a parent and a better parent and empower your child or children to to use to work with them, with them. And so we're going to highlight and I'm going to highlight three tools: inventories, observations, and questions and listening. So this is where I want to do a poll, and I'm going to ask for Molly's help. Um, I want to find out how many people are familiar with the Strengths Finder. And if you can go down there and just click, if there's, if you're familiar with that. Okay, and I'm going to figure out here. I'm going to. I'm going to put that poll onto the whiteboard. So maybe if I can have Molly do that. Okay, great. So there aren't too many people that are familiar with the Strengths Finder, but some are, thank you, Molly, uh, familiar with other tools. Yeah, and there's more tools out there than just Strengths Finders, that's for sure, in determining child strength. So. I'm going to just talk a little bit about it. Uh, it's created by an uh, organization called Gallup. And what I like about StrengthsFinder is that it has 40 years of research behind it. And they have narrowed down into 34 of the most common talents or strengths that people may have. And this is based on surveys from over 100 million people worldwide. So it's very widely used. It's been used a lot in the business community. And when taking the inventory, it will come with your top five strengths. And usually you play to probably 10 to 12 of those 34 strengths. And to, f to really know how unique you are, only one in 33.9 million people have the same five top strengths in exactly the same order. So they have found through this that it's very, uh, you are very unique in who you, in who you are. Um, the Strengths Finder is, there's like three inventories that Gallup has. One is called Strengths Explorer, and that's used by um, kids who are younger, like ages 10 to 14. Then there's Strengths Quest, which is ages 15 and up. And those are the two that I'm going to highlight. Strengths Finder, I would say you would need to be a little bit more mature and older, maybe 16 and up. And buying the book, it's more geared towards businesses and um, may not always be the most appropriate depending on your age of your child and their maturity. So um, Strengths Explorer, it has 78 questions and they um, have 10 different themes that the child's placed in. They're given three of their top themes. I uh, bought this for my son, the one who has ADHD, and he did just fine on it. And he came up with his top three themes, and as we read through them, he was like, yep, that sounds like me. That's that. Those are things that I do. And so it was very accurate. If you go on Amazon, it costs about 30 bucks to $30 to buy. But if you go to the Gallup 
web page and go into their store. You can purchase it online for around $10. And there you can print off the, it comes with a guide for the student or the child. It comes with a guide for the, the parent and actions that you can do to help your student um, de develop those strengths. So this is for kids ages 10 to 14, 14 years old. So yeah. It's designed for kids. If they're under the age of 10, you know, I'm going to give you some other uh, tools that you can use and other resources. Uh, Strengths Quest is a, very similar to Strength Finders. It has 34 strengths. It's for older kids. Um, it will give you your top five strengths. As a student, the Strengths Quest is given through lots of universities. The University of Minnesota uses Strengths Quest. They have all their incoming freshmen take the Strengths Quest and gives them the top five. It's more slanted towards education and career development, so it will talk about maybe where you could use your strengths in different career paths. And um, this is the one that we're going to be using with Girls Lead. We have been using Strengths Finders, and now I'm becoming more familiar with Strengths Quest and just feel that it fits our needs a little bit more. And Molly, you know, I get that comment about I wish I knew this when I was a kid so much when I talk to the parents of the girls who are in Girls Lead. Yeah. So um, just a little bit about both of these. They have groupings, and I renamed these groupings, but with using the strength finders, there's kind of four broad groups. And maybe as you go back to those lists of words that you use to describe your child, um, just look at them and um, look at these and see where does it fit. And kids with reading difficulties at age 15, you maybe would want them to give them the um, Strengths Explorer because it's, I have to see this question, um, because it's a little bit easier to use and less questions. So I can answer those questions at the end though, Chris. Uh, the doers. The doers are these kids that really like a movement toward the, towards a goal. They're your get your done kids. And the get your done kids, um, you know, they like structure. They may like timelines, lists. You give them a, a, something and they're out there and they're doing it and they get the project done. Uh, cheerleaders. Cheerleaders bring that energy to the project or to a classroom or to an activity. They really like to be recognized and seen and heard. And um, they like to have people really rally around them and their ideas. Human glue. The human glue type of kids, they like to hold the group together. They're those kids that are including everybody, making sure that no one's left out. They're connecting with other kids in the different groups, and they really bring unity to a, a group. They might be a little bit more shy and on the quiet side and bring that quiet energy to a group. And then thinkers. The thinkers are those kids that really like to plan, they like information, they gather all the data, they're really asking about, you know, why are we doing this? Where are we going here? You know, what's this all about? And um, they might be the ones that kind of like to let be uh, quiet, have their quiet time, be left alone, and um, may, sh may show up as being a little bit more, uh, less emotional than others. So. Um, just think about those words that you wrote down and maybe where that child might fit into these four broad groupings. So another resource that I've, I've used is uh, books by Jennifer Fox and it's called Discovering and Developing Your Child's Strengths. It's a book where the first part is narrative and stories about it, and then the second part is workbook activities that you can do to discover their strengths and to develop them. Uh, there's she groups the kids into four or three different strength activity strengths, relationship strengths, and learning strengths, and she has a number of activities from. Uh, that go from ages 4 to 18. And so um, in her book, I'm going to give you a couple different tools that she uses to help you to determine and develop what, the, what your child's strengths might be. So one of those tools is just making observations. 
So as your child is playing, you know, how do they react to different situations? What are they seeing? What are they doing? What are they hear what do you hear them say? Um, you know, when they're playing with a group, how are they what are they doing? It, as they're playing alone. Maybe when it comes to doing activities and chores around the house, you know, what chores do they seem to really want to do? What chores do they really don't like to do? Um, when it comes to just family activities, you know, where what do they like to do? Where do they like to take charge? What do they like to um, really be a part of? So creating those observations and just being aware and not putting some sort of judgment or evaluation on it is helpful in determining what your child might have their their strengths. Also, another game is playing that I like to play with my kids is the why game. You know, asking and digging a little bit deeper. So for instance, what's your favorite class? Uh, I think it's math. Well, why is it math? Because I really like solving those problems. Well, why do you like solving problems? Well, because it feels good when I get that right answer. Well, what about that makes you feel good? Um, well, it's kind of like winning, and I really like to win. So maybe what you're hearing the child say in that is really listening and listening with your heart. And from that dialogue, I really pick out that the child's saying that they are a problem solver. They like that challenge of solving the problems. And when they get it, they like to win and it feels good. So using that why question, and you could even dig a little diff deeper if you want, and really being aware of, of getting down to those real specific things that they like to do. So perspective is really an important thing. You know, and realizing that you see life through a different lens than your child sees their life. And um, this knowing your strengths and knowing your child's strengths is a great way to empower your child and gives you a perspective about your um, child. My daughter, I'm going to just tell a little story about her. When she was about, you know, when she was young, She's now 14, so I guess she's still young, but when she was younger, she always wanted to be in on the game, and we'd be in the middle of a game, and she'd come along, and she um, would want to just, you know, be part of that game, and we'd say, well, wait just a minute, you know, we need to finish this up, and then you can join in, and she'd get very upset and cry and get angry about it. Well, in discovering a little bit more about strengths and about her, she has a, a strength called includer and that's one that's her top strength and it's including others and being aware of others and really being aware of those people that are being left out and making an effort to include them you know she's very caring and sensitive in that way and that then allowed me to see her differently and understand why she was so upset when we told her to wait and um, really wanted to be part of that game and gave me a whole different perspective about her, about her. So really knowing um, your your child's strengths is is big in in parenting your child because everybody's going to be different. And that's just the beginning though. The beginning is is knowing your strengths and knowing your child's strengths, but then really going on and helping them develop that strength. So I want you to go back to those three to five words that you wrote down about your your child and just select one of those um, words and describe a time that when you saw that your child used that strength or used that. So, for instance, you know, my son is really a cautious decision maker. And when I ask him a question, when I go, when I ask him a question, um, I just know that it's going to take him longer to answer than it does maybe another child. 
So really think about that child and what's, where do you see them using that behavior skill? So I would really encourage you in um, helping to develop their strengths that you create the strength journal. And you know, use those things as far as the observations and the uh, asking questions. It really helps you to find some reoccurring ideas and patterns and thoughts because as I said before, your talents are those you know, thought patterns, that reoccurring ideas, those reoccurring behaviors. And you know, really asking your child too to be part of this, um, asking them questions about certain activities and then having them reflect on what strengths they use, writing down positive words that describe them or positive words that they can use to describe themselves is really um, helpful and it's really a benefit to go back and uh, look at that and just really see this is what it looks like to have the strength come forth. Visuals are really great to have. And then this was created by my, my daughter. And it's fun to do, too. As we did her strengths and uh, we talked about who she was and words that described her, then she created a poster board. And after she created and pulled out pictures from magazines and things like that, and after she created this poster, she, um, I had her explain to me. And we really, I really listened and reflected back to her what she was telling me about herself. And then we got a frame for it and she has this in her room, hanging in her room. So every day she can look at it and say, you know, this is who I am and this is where I want to go and this is who I want to be. We do this with Girls Lead too in the program that I talked about and we have them create vision boards and we have a list of ideas of what they can put on their vision board and the girls just love it. We, I don't know, spent like two, three, two hours on it and then each of them got up and presented their, their vision board about themselves. And so, um, you know, just having them choose pictures and really listening to them helps them to also verbalize their strengths and for you to help them reflect back on them. And then recognition. Love recognition. As I talked about my daughter and her strength of being an includer and just helping her notice when she's using that along with her other strengths that she has, you know, but just telling her, wow, I really like how you asked everyone to be part of that game and, you know, saw that people were standing out. You know, what a great way to use that includer strength. So just being that person that uh, encourages them, your child and, and helps them to recognize when they're using those strengths. And being an advocate for your child. You know, there's so many people out there that are willing to tell <clears throat> you what's wrong. What's wrong with your child? But you need to be that person in that child's life that really allows them to focus on what's right with them. You know, what's right with this world? And one of the things I've done before and suggested to me by a friend is to write a letter to my child's teacher at the beginning of the school year and just really bring out this is who my child is, this is their, you know, what they like to do, here's how they like to be um, and list those, use those strengths to really describe your child and that's a great way to advocate for your child. Also finding the support, um, that teacher, that mentor, that coach that just really helps your child enhance their strengths. And I talked about my son, Andrew. His sixth grade year did not go well, but his fifth grade year went marvelous. And it's because he had this teacher called Mr. Hinson. His name was Mr. Hinson. And he was their fifth grade teacher. I requested him. We are in a small school district, a small town. I know most of the teachers at the school. And um, I just knew Mr. Hinson would be that guy that would really help enhance Andrew's strengths. He would give kids brain breaks and get them up and moving during the class room time. He had little competitive games that were for learning that really involved all the kids in the class. He had hands-on materials and models and all of those things just really helped Andrew with um, 
his strengths of discovery, competition, and presence. And so just being aware of that in your in your classroom, in your coaching situations that, you know, if the teacher knows, this might really allow them to to help your child hone in on those skills and have that that time factor to practice them. Our fourth one is just finding those areas where you can really apply your strengths in the real world. And um I just know that there's times out there when you feel successful, when you have energy, you know, activities that just really energize you. And, and there's things out there that people just rely on you to do really well. And so think about those for a minute and about yourself as a parent. You know, and these are places where you really use your strengths. So I'm just going to briefly talk about where you can have your child use your strengths. Um, at home is a great place to start practicing. You know, when you're planning family events and going on a trip, make a list of all the things that need to be done before you go on that trip. And then have ch your child volunteer. And they'll usually pick out the thing that they like to do and that they have the, the, that skill to do. My kids are really into 4-H, and, pro and I enjoy teaching project-based learning activities. And so in 4-H, my children, when they're picking their projects, they're all different. Uh, my oldest, Joseph, really likes to focus on one project area. He loves poultry. He has his chickens. When he's there, he likes to pick out what kind of chickens we're going to get this year. You know, are we going to have turkeys and ducks? And he just really is focused on that. My other kids like to have a wide variety and later on hone in on what they like to do for their projects. Uh, my youngest three enjoy giving demonstrations, getting up and speaking in front of others where my oldest does not. So just finding those areas, chores at home, make a list of chores and have them select what they want to do. They'll pick things that really are the things that will help them hone in on their uh, skills. In the community, I've talked about Girls Lead, that we have um, a community service component with that, and we have the girls really figure out how am I using my my strengths in this community service project. As I go out into the community, uh, how can I use this strength? Where is it showing up in my project? And then also the stepping outside your comfort zone. Uh, having your kids volunteer and looking for those opportunities for them to volunteer the in their community that are going to build their skills and their strengths. Volunteering is so important. And after we're done here, our community is having our annual Relay for Life. And so my daughter and her friends and I are going to go out there and start helping them to set up with their Relay for Life. And the last one is in the classroom. I know some of you work in classrooms or work with alternative learning. I uh, had my classroom set up as a project-based classroom when I taught science. I had one high school astronomy class, and these were the kids that you had to take a science credit, and they didn't want to take physics or chemistry, and so they ended up in my class. And so I made it very project-based learning. We, as a culminating activity, we created a a magazine for the class, and I brought in them using a variety of their strengths. I believe choice is really huge in the classroom, and so there were all different choices of way that, ways that they can contribute to this magazine as being the art director, the editor, a feature writer, a comic strip maker. You know, I had, and I also had them apply for the position that they wanted on the magazine. Uh, staff, and so there they also got the skill of filling out a job application, interviewing for it. So I made it interdisciplinary, and I look back on that work that those kids did, and it is just amazing to see how um, kids that you know other classroom teachers really didn't think that they had skills, their skills just came forth in that 
and um, their strengths and they just shined. And so I also used it as far as a piece for them to reflect on what they learned in astronomy and I had a rubric created and a self-reflection piece and that's how they got graded on it. And so I feel that um, this is something that currently is missing from a lot of classrooms today. And that the self-reflection piece is huge. Creating that self-awareness in ourselves and as human beings is important. And as in human beings, we're really needy people. And we have a lot of emotional needs and physical needs. And things like success, connection, choice, um, all of those things are our needs. And fun and play is one of the needs that we have. And so I'm going to try here to do a whiteboard activity. And I'm just going to ask you to write how do you like to have fun? So if you go over onto the side, there's a text tool. And I'm going to let everybody have the text tool. And you go over there, and you can, I think, make a text box. Woo! Over here. Well, I'm having a little difficulty with that. Yeah, the square in the A. Oh, there we go. Oh, thank you, Molly. Okay, so you can create a text box. And what are all the ways that you like to have fun? And maybe it's reading. It might be uh, playing with your kids. Playing. Uh, board games, you know, maybe it's, I like to kayak, oh, crocheting, great, kayaking, I love dancing, um, yeah, reading, I even like to go out for walks, so we have on here, um, oh, meet, friends for coffee, watching movies. So we have a variety of different ways on um, how we like to have fun. And they're all different. And so this gives us a little bit different perspective on you know, our needs. And we each get our needs of fun met differently. Um, and we can see uh, the world through our own lens. And this also helps us to see our children that they have a different lens, a different perspective, which creates uh, more compassion and understanding within our family and with the children that we work with. So knowing our strengths create, you know, understanding of how we can get our needs met and creates a better understanding of relationships. And, you know, by doing, just knowing, I can then be more understanding and of the choices and the behaviors that my child has. So parenting from your strengths. I think this is really important. And in fact, I would almost make this as number one, is to know yourself and who you are as a parent and, and how you are as a parent is how you're going to see the world. And this is a continual process. But it's one of the, I think, the first steps to really unleashing that brilliance of your family is to find out who you are as a parent and then using your skills. So I'm going to ask right now if there's any questions up here, Molly, that I should be aware of that I haven't answered, or if you want to, because I've had a hard time following the chat box. <laughs> Do you think this also applies to teachers, teaching from your strengths? Teachers are usually told to teach the students' strengths. Oh, definitely, yes. Um, as a teacher, 
And when I was in a classroom, I wish I had known much more about this. And um, I just recently saw a book out there about teaching from your strengths. And it's on Amazon. You can just Google it on Amazon. And um, I think it's so important to know who you are as a, as a teacher, definitely, just like knowing yourself as a parent. Are there any other questions? Well, strengths don't equal skills. No, actually strengths is a combination of your talents along with time put into honing those skills. And so, yeah, it's not that strengths don't equal skills. And, and I'm not um, here to say that you don't hone your skill if, if math or isn't your, your strong suit that you just don't do it. I'm, but just to realize, too, that um, even by doing it over and over and over again, you may not be that person who's going to have wonderful math skills. No, oh, that's sad. I would, yeah, I would really um, help your son to look at Yeah, um, I would say uh, both Chris and Peggy asked about developing those um, talents. And if you use either one of those resources that I have, and I'm going to put the resources uh, up here on a page. And then also, uh, I've created a website. And I'm going to start a newsletter here in September where I'll be using those resources. So if you would like to get my newsletter, please go to my website and sign up for it. But um, I would say, you know, using those, either the Strength Finders or getting Jennifer Fox's book in there, they have a lot of different activities that you can do with your kids once you've really helped them to develop or to define who, what their strengths are. And I know with my son Andrew, we did the Strengths Explorer and took that and uh, that has a parent component to it. and. Um, had him read it over and then using some of those activities and just, you know, being really aware as a parent when you see them, you know, use that strength to look at it as something as healthy. I talked about my son who takes a long time in making decisions and then pointing out to him, you know, I'm really glad that you're taking the time to think about what you're going to say or think about how you're going to react. Um, so. I think those are two ways of just really taking those resources and then using them to help children to develop those strengths. I know it's sad to hear when kids have been told so many times what's wrong with them that they feel that they have no talent. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I'm just going to tell you that, um, you know, I know I've given you a lot of information and um, I it's really hard to implement this all on your own. So as I said before, I'm, I started my company, Wildwood Learning, and I really want to help families who have children that have just disengaged from learning, help them to find some tools, resources, alternative ways of them so that they can engage their, their child through knowing their strengths. And I think one way of engaging your child is to have them know their strengths and, and their talents and giving them time to, to really, and places to really build that skill and practice for their talents. So please come to my website and um, I can be reached on Facebook. Here's my Twitter handle. I'm on Google Plus or, you know, send me an email. I would love to hear from you and uh, help you in any way that I can. And um, so it was just wonderful speaking to you today. And I'm going to leave you with the page. Here's the resources that I used uh, in my, and there's videos on YouTube. And if you go to that, uh, each of those 34 different strengths, there's like a little one to two minute video there that uh, has the person describing what that strength's all about. And so, and there's just many more resources out there. So I thank you very much for being part of this. 
and for joining my session. And I hope you guys have a fabulous day. And thanks, Molly. <laughs>